So um, at the uh, so to begin um, at the uh, in the prayer which comes at the conclusion of the sixty verses of reasoning, uh, Master Nagarjuna has composed a verse, a verse which says, um, uh, "By these merits, uh, by by the uh, by the virtues um, that I've created here, uh, may all living beings um, be." Uh, uh, um, uh, by by the uh, merits that uh, I have created here, may all uh, may uh, may all may all living beings uh, complete 
the two uh, collections, two collections referring to the collection of merit and the collection of gnosis. Uh, Sonomishe so, so then, uh, then it says that, uh, and from uh, these two collections of merit and gnosis, uh, may I and all other sentient beings uh, uh, rapidly um, uh, actualize the two noble bodies. Now, uh, the, the two noble or two noble embodiments is probably a better way to translate that. Uh, so what this verse is showing is the way in which the uh, dharmakaya, well, the, the uh, physical embodiments of Buddhahood, the rupakaya, uh, which contains both uh, uh, sambhogakaya and nirmanakaya, uh, the, these, two, these physical embodiments of Buddhahood are actualized through the uh, uh, accumulation of the collection of merit, whereas the uh, dharmakaya, uh, the, that embodiment of Buddhahood um, is actualized through the uh, collection of the accumulation of gnosis. Uh, so here, the accumulation of merit, uh, or the collection of merit, uh, refers then to the practices that we do, um, beginning with, for example, the uh, seven-part worship, that, uh, that where one uh, worships uh, holy beings through in seven different ways. Uh, then, uh, and or it has multiple uh, seven, seven sort of parts to this uh, practice, and uh, through through that kind of practice, then when accumu then one accumulates uh, merit, and that gradually ac uh, accumulates into the collection of merit, which is the the uh, primary cause for the physical embodiments of Buddhahood. Now, uh, this these uh, collection of merit. It entails that uh, the, the activities that you're involved in are um, governed by bodhicitta, that is the aspiration to achieve perfect awakening for the sake of all uh, sentient beings. So if you're doing the seven part worship, et cetera, these other kinds of, any kind of practice, including the perfections that are uh, practiced upon the upper levels of the bodhisattva path and so forth. Uh, and, but all of these have to be uh, held by bodhicitta, that is uh, governed by or controlled by the, um, that motivation of bodhicitta. Uh, so all of those activities uh, collectively uh, and the merit that, that is generated through the performance of all of these activities uh, culminates then in the, co the um, uh, collection of merit, and that collection of merit itself then is the primary cause for the uh, production of the physical embodiments of Buddhahood. Um, now, the collection of gnosis, on the other hand, uh, refers to especially, or, or the sort of central part of that, is the gnosis which, uh, under, which directly re understands or realizes emptiness. Uh, however, to produce the uh, collection of gnosis, then uh, likewise, it can't just be a simple uh, understanding of emptiness or realization of emptiness. Rather, that realization of emptiness has to be itself, in a sense, governed by or uh, controlled by 
the bodhicitta as well. So uh, when one meditates on emptiness uh, at any phase of the path, such that it's, uh, such that it's governed by bodhicitta, then that, is, that activity is the uh, producing the merit, which eventually collectively serves as the uh, collection of, uh, I'm sorry, the collection of gnosis, which uh, in its uh, uh, totality serves as the um, uh, principal cause for the actualization of the dharmakaya. However, it's not the case that these two uh, are independent exactly because uh, well, in the second case, it's quite clear that uh, when one is doing this uh, meditation on emptiness or, or, or realizing, directly understanding emptiness, uh, then that has to be governed by bodhicitta. But similarly, when one is involved in the uh, practice of the path, um, the other facets of the practice of the path designed to uh, produce the collection of gnosis, I'm sorry, the collection of merit, then uh, that too should be um, uh, governed by the, underst the understanding and, and, uh, of emptiness. So the two cooperate together in that way, although you say that the collection of uh, merit is the principal cause for the actualization of the physical embodiments of Buddhahood, whereas the collection of gnosis is the primary cause for the actualization of the um, dharmakaya. Uh, it's not that they're kind of independent as such, they're, uh, rather they, they uh, cooperate with each other. Oh yeah, then they said that, so now we saw that, that kind of so good to get so now we saw that, and I don't know if you're not doing it, and you saw that, but I didn't talk in the name, and I saw that, you 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 saw that, Dora so then when we say the collection of merit, um, this is again referring to uh, is, is focusing sort of on practices like the uh, seven part worship. Uh, and th those sorts of practices. Uh, and then uh, especially the uh, first three of the six perfections of uh, generosity, ethical conduct, and uh, patience or forbearance, these, uh, as, as we've mentioned, uh, and it's also stated in the introduction to the middle way, that these first three perfections or the practices that we find in the first three perfections are especially advocated for uh, householders, uh, but uh, of course also for others as well. Uh, and so these kinds of practices, act activities like that, um, uh, if, if they're done in the way we've described, then these uh, things function to generate merit, to produce the merit, and then that, um, uh, when that merit is collected or uh, 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 completed, the collection is completed, then it functions as the uh, primary principal cause for the actualization of the uh, physical embodiments of Buddhahood uh, and then, on the other hand, the uh, collection of gnosis uh, operates as the uh, uh, understanding, uh, collection of gnosis here, uh, the activities that are involved in a collection of gnosis uh, especially pertain to uh, the um, latter portions of the six perfections, uh, and particularly uh, the development of meditative concentration, and, and specifically the kind of meditative concentration that is uh, shamatha, the uh, sort of uh, tranquil uh, calming of the mind, tranquilization of the mind, uh, and then the uh, wisdom, of course, which uh, wisdom here referring to the uh, two, for example, understanding the two types of selflessness. And uh, so those kinds of practices of uh, meditative concentration and wisdom 
uh, are the principal sort of thing that one does so as to generate the collection of um, a gnosis. And then that, that collection serves as the uh, primary principal cause for the actualization of the um, uh, Dharmakaya. Oh, yeah. Then do you know? Anita, you see, you saw that then a chugu to get up. Any, oh, son of the solar then, any longer to get up. Any, you see, you saw that son of the toy nigger then, any too good to bear. Then there, I'm shaking out of the story. Yeah, the carrier is an any longer to be cool, you gay, and the two judges just some yerky. Do you say something? Who's a good now you're going to tell me, Zeba? Who's a chill and a castle, who was a tene and the chungo cosagi, you dela? And a Sassanian Gisemba Madam Meva in Zang. And a Oyzan, son of Gutola tene, and a longer to your good to Jay Chen. That's one of the easy nigger Gutola tene, two good to Jay, said they, and a two I need to just some Longer Teaching Kerber, <laughs> So here then, uh, it is said that in terms of these three um, dimensions of Buddhahood, that is the Dharmakaya and then there's the uh, uh, Sambhogakaya or in, in enjoyment, uh, embodiment of complete enjoyment. And then there's the uh, third one, the Tuku uh, or Nirmanakaya, the embodiment which is an emanation, an emanated form. Uh, then the uh, latter two of these are the physical embodiments of Buddhahood the, uh, it's called the rupakaya, or the physical embodiments of Buddhahood. And uh, so the relationship between the two uh, collections and the um, actualization of these uh, latter two, or the physical embodiments of Buddhahood, is such that um, it is said that the uh, sambhogakaya, or the, uh, the embodiment of perfect enjoyment, uh, the, that, that embodiment of Buddhahood, um, is, uh, the, is, uh, arises from the um, collection of merit, whereas the nirmanakaya, or the embodiment th that is an emanated form, is, um, arises from both the um, collection of merit as well as the co collection of gnosis. 
Now, uh, here, the uh, Sambo I'm going to use the Sanskrit terms for these, uh, Sambhogakaya and Nirmanakaya. Uh, the Sambhogakaya appears to um, only to bodhisattvas who have achieved the upper levels of the bodhisattva path, the pure uh, stages of the bodhisattva path. So, um, uh, so the, the Sambhogakaya appears uh, uh, to the bodhisattvas who have achieved the, uh, the bodhisattva stages, that is the Arya, Arya bodhisattvas who have uh, realized, understand reality. Uh, whereas the Nirmanakaya, uh, on the other hand, uh, appears uh, and teaches the Dharma uh, directly to uh, persons who are of the three different lineages uh, or three different types, uh, line let's say lineages here. Uh, that is uh, a person who is, uh, the three lineages refer to uh, uh, persons who are going to achieve um, uh, nirvana uh, first by means of the shravaka uh, vehicle or second second uh, from through the prateka uh, prate, prateka buddha vehicle uh, and then also to those who will achieve uh, buddhahood by means of the uh, bodhisattva uh, vehicle as well so then since the uh, it, it is said that the nirmanakaya teaches persons of all three uh, lineages Therefore, uh, it is produced, uh, did I say the Nirmanakaya? Nirmanakaya? Yeah. The Nirmanakaya um, uh, teaches persons of all three lineages. Therefore, it's produced from both the, uh, product, the collection of merit and the collection of gnosis, whereas the Sambhogakaya is, uh, primarily arises out of the uh, collection of uh, merit. <laughs> Chomegichabadoji, so uh, here then, uh, if we think of these, we examine these two uh, physical embodiments of Buddhahood, the Sambhogakaya and Nirmanakaya. Um, one should, and, and among Nirmanakayas, uh, the uh, emanated forms or em, emanated, emanated embodiments of, uh, the, of uh, Buddhahood, um, here we're referring uh, uh, specifically to what is called the uh, Supreme Nirmanakaya. That is the uh, emanated forms of, of emanated forms of, bu of Buddhahood, which appear uh, with the uh, in uh, which appear in the world uh, in the impure world uh, such as we inhabit, and that uh, teach the Dharma. Uh, they 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 demonstrate all of the various uh, twelve deeds that are specific to this this uh, kind of supreme Nirmanakaya. Of, uh, of Buddhahood, and they teach, teach Dharma to all three types of uh, persons, the three uh, persons belonging to the three lineages. So um, that's, that's the kind of aspect of the Nirmanakaya that we're talking about here. And then uh, in terms of the Sambhogakaya, um, here, this is, uh, it, it exists uh, merely in uh, Akinishta, the special uh, pure land, uh, and uh, teaches the Dharma only to bodhisattvas, Arya bodhisattvas, uh, and uh, it doesn't appear then to uh, ordinary persons that are not, and persons that are not bodhisattvas. So uh, that being the case, and, and so we say that that, uh, that Sambhogakaya 
arises uh, only from the collection of merit, whereas the Nirmanakaya arises from both the collection of merit and the collection of gnosis. But one should not think that there's a, sort of some difference in superiority and inferiority among them, thinking that the, the Nirmanakaya is superior or something like that. Uh, that's, uh, one shouldn't think in that way. Oh yeah, that tender, and your cars are tobacco new with it. And your cars are topic do, and that you are not saying, and it's on a big song, you see good solar than a chungo or in town. That tender, so I'm good sort of, you see good dinner, so you know, lava, that little take them can go at it. No, you are not a man, but change you do, so you love a la, number la, true, so to give you so you done. Do <laughs> Do Luna Gilet, Teta Budan, Dana, or that's one of the two good to get down, because it's so good to get Luna Gilet, Teta Budan, Dana, and it Sanjay Combang, Tone, and it cause or a good tent at a young guard, stung at a temperature of the good in them. Combatona, ten Teta Budan to Guru, she said, Sonam Chisam de Teta do and a Masha, Sonam Gitet, did you get ten did that to do any? So, um, given that uh, these these two embodiments of Buddhahood, the the Dharmakaya and the, then the physical embodiments, and then the physical embodiments are subdivided into the two, the Sambhogakaya and Nirmanakaya, uh, that these arise out of uh, the collection of merit and the collection of gnosis then uh, uh, one uh, needs to understand what the uh, collection of merit is, the collection of gnosis is, uh, the causes that give rise to these. Uh, and and uh, so then it's explained here in this uh, next chapter is a uh, summation, a summary of the, uh, uh, the collection of, uh, of, of merit and gnosis. It's called for the, the, uh, the summation of the collections for awakening. That is the achievement of uh, unexcelled perfect awakening of Buddhahood. So uh, here, this uh, has multiple subdivisions. The uh, beginning of it, and it says first, there's a um, instruction here to the king to train uh, in the two uh, uh, collections, which are the uh, cause of unexcelled uh, awakening, and uh, it, it, this uh, has multiple subdivisions the ways in which uh, these uh, act as uh, they, uh, the way in which the collections occur, uh, the results of, of the collections. Um, uh, and there's an instruction not to become discouraged at the accumulation of these collections in, in uh, trying to accumulate these collections. The uh, character of the two collections, the uh, adjuncts uh, to the two collections, and then the benefits, uh, the way in which the benefits of these collections arise, uh, of the benefit of accumulating the co uh, collections arises. So the first of these uh, has the way in which uh, these act as collections uh, for these um, uh, achievements. And then there's uh, an uh, exhortation to the king to listen to this instruction. Uh, and, um, and then within that, uh, there's, uh, then that's the first topic here. And, uh, and then the commentary here says that uh, these, um, uh, c w what we're explaining here is, is the, uh, the primary causes here. Uh, 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 
So it's, although it is, and, and here as, as background to this uh, initial, above in the initial, uh, immediately preceding portion of the text was described the kind of signs that uh, a uh, great person who is a uh, chakravartin, a, a wheel turner, literally, uh, and that there are three types of these persons that we mentioned, uh, the uh, universal emperor, Pratyeka Buddhas, and then fully awakened Buddhas. So uh, how is it that one achieves these signs uh, through the accumulation of merit in the practice of the path? Or wh how, does one, uh, how does the collection of merit function in part as the uh, cause for the production of these signs of a great uh, being, a, a wheel turning uh, being? Um, <clears throat> So uh, these, it says here that the, uh, the principal causes are explained as being three. However, uh, all, of this, all, all of the um, the entirety of the causes of the uh, of, uh, unexcelled awakening are um, included within the uh, two accumulate uh, two collections. So where it says three, that's referring to the activities of body, uh, speech, and mind. Both are f uh, physical, verbal, and mental activities, all three of them. Uh, but these, uh, all of these causes of unexcelled awakening can be included within the two collections. So these will be explained here. And uh, it says that if your physical and verbal uh, karma is uh, you possess physical and verbal, verbal karma, which is as we've uh, explained uh, above, that is in, in terms of the showing the relationship between the causes that give rise to the signs of a, a great person and the effects themselves. Then uh, when one achieves the uh, stage of Buddhahood, the status of a Buddha, then uh, those uh, signs will occur, uh, uh, and uh, this will be explained. Oh, yeah, da. Kondu, Kansore, Sanjay, you come on, Tom, and it's ten, 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 Chita yeah. Oh. So here then, uh, in the previous portion of the text, uh, this previous chapter, it's been, at the end of it, it's been explained uh, how it is that when one achieves Buddhahood, uh, one will, uh, will, one will uh, have those signs. Uh, that's been explained, but we have not yet explained uh, how, how much uh, merit is required in order to um, have those signs. Uh, so th this will be explained then in, in the, this part of the, this portion of the text. And this begins by saying, uh, O great king, listen to the way in which the marks of a Buddha, um, and that's the first part of it. Uh, uh, and so uh, it says that um, uh, these, since it's the case uh, that these signs of a Buddha arise from merit, which is inconceivable, uh, we haven't explained that, uh, so therefore, O King, uh, listen to this, this explanation. And so there's an exhortation to the King to listen to the uh, instruction. Oh, yeah. That's the... I'm sorry. And the whole chamber is... So you know, Sanshikua. So you got to call it Sanshikua. Sanshikua. Okay. 
So then, uh, so it says here in the text, there's a, a word which uh, uh, means listen, uh, and it is a, uh, uh, an, um, a uh, vocative, or it's an imperative form, saying, uh, exhorting the king to listen, uh, and it can be spelled different ways. But um, so it says, uh, O king, listen to this, uh, and that's the exhortation to listen to this instruction and uh, showing uh, how it is that the individual signs arise from uh, specific quantities of merit. And uh, this will be explained uh, in the way in which it is taught in the great um, uh, traditions, the great tradition of the Mahayana. Oh, yeah. That's it. So, I'm going to talk to you about it. Deixa Pesce Chapatella <coughs> Jidani Sonam Papi Puga Chiktu de Sanjayi Papi Puga Chiktu Bare Sanjayi Papi Puga Tamja Sonam Tedang Drava Chunga so so what Ted Tamjagi Anni or Sonam Ted Tedat Domba Kiso Sanjayi Papu Puga Chik Ted Tamjag Sonam Tamja Dan Drava Chunga Re Segana Sanjay Papi Puga Nit Tamja Ted Dan Drava Chung So this show then the next uh, two two verses verse two and three uh, show how it is that um, the a, a single pour of a uh, of the sage uh, they are referring to the sage uh, the Buddha uh, it, it occurs uh, out of uh, ha, out of a merit uh, merit which is um, has the measure of multiplying uh, all of the merit that is uh, produced by um, Pratyeka Buddhas, et cetera, and the, the et cetera will be explained later, uh, or in the, in the verse. Uh, if you multiply all of that merit by 10, then uh, that much merit will uh, produce a single pour of a, uh, the, the, uh, the sage, um, the sage. So uh, the, verse here, the verses here say, a single pour of a Buddha is made from 10 times the following amount of merit the total merit from which all Pratyeka Buddhas have arisen, the total merit that has produced all learners uh, and those beyond learning, and this will be explained, and the total merit of the entire uh, universe, 
uh, sentient beings in the world, which uh, like the universe, uh, it, it's the translation r r translates this as infinite, I would prefer measureless, uh, the, which like the universe is measureless. Each Puravi Buddha likewise arises from that, from that much merit. So uh, the commentary here explains that um, if uh, one takes uh, all the merit uh, <clears throat> Uh, and the, that is, uh, that functions as the causes, uh, all the merit which functions as the causes from which um, all the uh, Pratyeka Buddhas, individually realized, individual realizers or Pratyeka Buddhas have, uh, that exist throughout the entirety of the cosmos, uh, all of that merit, that's one thing. And then if you take all of the merit which uh, functions as the cause uh, from which uh, all, uh, w from which um, the um, uh, Aryas who uh, are on the, uh, the seven uh, stages of, of uh, development of the Arya um, uh, <clears throat> portion of the uh, Hinayana path, the path of the lesser vehicle, as well as the, uh, those who have achieved the state of uh, no more learning uh, within, uh, on that path. So all that merit. And then if you take um, all of the merit uh, which generates um, hap the good uh, forms of existence, the uh, pleasant kinds of destinies, within uh, the in, uh, entirety of the cosmos of the world or universe. Uh, and um, just then it says, just as the uh, cosmos, uh, just as the cosmos is measureless, uh, so it, that's how measureless uh, this mass of merit would be. And, uh, it, but if you take that uh, measureless amount of merit, and you multiply it by 10, then that much merit uh, would uh, produce a single pore of, uh, of a Buddha. And uh, if you take that, uh, all of the pores of a Buddha uh, are produced from um, that much merit, from all of that quantity of merit. So they, they arise, if you take all of the pores that one finds on a Buddha, uh, his body, then uh, each of them individually arises from that much merit. Oh yeah, that he jena, Papi Puka Tanjani, Jebrechi, Sonamka, Teta Jani, Duai, Beja Sambuchi to Shui, Sigana, and in Papi Puka Tamje, Jebrechi, and in Sonamka in by Teta, Jani Jai Duaki, and in Sanjaki, and in Beja Sambuchi, and in Chit Shiaus Duare, Chit Shi. Then uh, the next verse, uh, verse four says, a single uh, secondary sign of a Buddha is obtained through 100 times the amount of merit uh, needed to produce all of the Buddha's pores. Uh, same thing uh, said in the commentary here, if you take all of the merit uh, which is required to generate uh, all of the pores that one uh, sees, or that, that exist on a Buddha's body, then uh, you multiply that by 100, uh, and then that would be, uh, that is uh, held to be what is required to produce uh, a single one of the uh, secondary uh, marks, uh, secondary signs of a Buddha. Oh, yeah. That is, yeah. Sonam chinyi, sonam tenyi tenyi, sonam chinyi tenyi jai, sonam chinyi tenyi ji maru, sonam chinyi tenyi ji, jau beja sambo ni, jigdar chinde, teda bo, jaju pa du chunga juru, sayi gana, so then uh, the next verse says, King, that amount of merit uh, completes one auspicious secondary sign. Likewise, from that amount of merit uh, arises each of them up to uh, the 80. So there are 80 of these, what are translated as secondary signs here. And uh, so that much uh, merit is required. Uh, so it says just, just as uh, that quantity of merit is required to produce one of the uh, secondary signs, O King, 
then uh, whatever uh, each each of the individual uh, of 80 secondary signs uh, requires uh, that much merit to uh, produce it. Oh yeah, the new business I'm going to do that. Do be so I'm talking about it. That I can't do what you do. It's in between the two. So the business you do both times get get back. Any so I'm going to do this. Then the verse six says, a single mark of a great person. Here, great person is in reference to uh, Tathagata, uh, the Tathagata. And uh, so a single mark of a great person comes from 100 times the mass of merit needed to produce all 80 secondary signs. Uh, so same thing occurs in, in the commentary that the uh, collection of merit uh, which is required to uh, produce or to accomplish or achieve um, the, all of the 80 uh, secondary signs, these good uh, secondary signs, uh, all of that, if one multiplies it by 100, then that would, is what produces the single, uh, a, a single um, primary sign or primary mark of a great person, great person here uh, in referring to the Tathagata. Oh yeah, that didn't, that's hand, ten is some June Drubi, just on them, Jazia Kanyba, Tata don't do Juwa, it, the one that is the Buho, say Gala, that's hand, that's some Zani chat, ten some Zani for Tamja Drubi, do. And it's on a Jacin for Kanyba Tata, that don't do Juaki, Tata don't do Juwa, and it. So then uh, verse 7 says, uh, showing that uh, all of the uh, merit, which is if you multiply all of that merit by a thousand, uh, all of that merit is required, uh, all of the merit required to generate all of the uh, primary uh, signs primary marks of a great person, the Tathagata, then uh, that is required to produce the uh, this special uh, curl that exists uh, on the forehead be, uh, between the eye, uh, above the eyebrows uh, <clears throat> is required to produce that. And so the verse here says, uh, seven, uh, through a thousand times the vast merit which causes uh, 30 of the marks, uh, the 30 marks, the did can the sumchu it's all a sumchu ten sumchu tani yoru wa ten sumchu tani bo jubi ane son tamje jubi ke sonam ya chen bo kanye ba ta ta dong de jua ke no ni di ke it's all a sumchu it's all it's all a sumchu jubi ke ni it's all sumchu it's all ya che ten sumchu jubi che it's all se de kona ye ke no che ji du wa ye ke so, uh, so uh, if you take then uh, the merit, which is in the commentary reads it as 32, uh, <clears throat> if you take Mm, this is verse seven. This is verse seven. So uh, then uh, the la uh, 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 u
so here then it says uh, uh, in verse 7 that uh, through a thousand times the vast merit uh, which causes the root text here reads 30 of the marks uh, arises like the full moon uh, the swirl of hair between the brows However, uh, in the commentary, it says that if you take uh, the, the vast amount of merit, uh, which, is, which functions as the cause for uh, producing the 32 uh, major marks, uh, ma major signs, all of that, and you multiply it by uh, 1,000, then, um, th then that is, functions as the cause for this uh, special uh, curl uh, 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 that uh, exists on the forehead, which is here described as being similar to the full moon. Oh, yeah. That's the good thing. I need some of them to do it. The good thing is some of them that don't like any don't buy it. She's a tiny minama to be two to give a chair. See, Gala. That's the good to take it. The good to buy it. I need some of them that don't like charity. Then uh, if you take uh, the mer all of that merit and you multiply it by a thousand, uh, then uh, all of that merit, that uh, is what is required to produce uh, the uh, special, uh, it's called ushnisha, uh, uh, ushnisha, the crown protrusion, it's sometimes translated, but we'll use just the Sanskrit here. So uh, the, all of the, and the verse here says, verse eight, from a hundred, oh, hundred thousand times, uh, uh, hundred thousand, really. So, did tong, tong yana? Uh, I think it just says a thousand, actually. And the commentary says a uh, hundred thousand also. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so, so from a hundred thousand times the merit required for the forehead swirl is produced the protector's ushnisha, the top of which is imperceptible. Um, so that's the same thing is said in the uh, commentary here that the... Uh, the merit, all of those merits which are uh, required to produce the uh, swirl of hair between the, on the forehead, between the brow, on the brow, uh, is it multiplied by a thousand. If you combine it all, all of that together, then um, this uh, produce, this, this is what is required to generate uh, the, to, to the uh, ushnisha, which is, uh, it says it's translated as imperceptible here. Uh, but uh, in in this uh, commentary, it says just it's uh, not uh, imperceptible is okay uh, of the protector protector's epithet of the uh, Tathagata here. Oh, oh. 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 Where it says it's imperceptible, it, it literally does not appearing. What that means is that um, others cannot see the actual measure of this. It's not something that uh, the the true measure of it is not uh, perceivable by others. To then the next verse says, this is verse 8a in this translation, you should realize that a, a single dharma conch 
of the one who possesses the ten powers arises from the amount of merit that produces uh, the ushnisha multiplied by a million uh, ten multiplied a million ten millions of times. Uh, so here then. The, uh, if you take the merit that is required to produce the ushnisha, that uh, special crown protrusion, uh, and you uh, take, uh, it says 10 million uh, of, of that, and you uh, multiply it by, uh, here it's 100 times 100,000, uh, I'm not sure of the math there, uh, and you, uh, uh, and you uh, <clears throat> then that, that is what is required uh, one should understand that that is required to uh, produce a single uh, dharma conch, conch, uh, the conch uh, shell uh, sh sign uh, of uh, the uh, one who possesses the ten powers. Here, one possessing the ten powers refers to knowing uh, that which exists and that which does not exist and so forth the, uh, and, and uh, other things like that. Oh, yeah. That's consoled. Sanjayaki Oh,送给咱吧，送咱吧，过来送给你，咱吧，穿衣，是哟。第一张送给咱吧，第二张呢，昨天呢，他把他参加了，他们，他们，我把衣裳、衣裳，俺那三件衣服全部过来的，都送
so here then the the uh, speech of the Buddha it's described as being like uh, this a special uh, kind of voice uh, that uh, has that quality of training uh, all of the beings to be uh, trained and led through the um, maturational and and uh, liberation aspects of the path so uh, that voice, uh, that speech, is something which is uh, uh, the, the merit necessary to produce it is uh, inconceivably vast. Uh, however, uh, and all, really all of the merit here, uh, which is being referred to, uh, that is when we speak of the merit uh, that's necessary to produce a single pore, uh, in a Buddha, and then multiplying that, the the merit required to produce one of the single uh, secondary signs of a Buddha, or are the uh, merit required to produce uh, the uh, primary uh, main signs of, of a Tathagata's uh, body, uh, and then uh, multiplying that further to uh, the, the merit required to produce um, the uh, special uh, curl on the forehead and multiplying that to produce the Ushnisha, and then uh, uh, the Dharma Kank uh, here, so, so where it says the Dharma conch uh, here, the conch uh, shell, that, that is a name for the uh, Buddha's speech, um, <clears throat> which is called uh, the voice of Brahma, or the, uh, is, uh, uh, the uh, sort of like pure, pure voice is a way to translate that. Uh, so that has that ability to lead the disciples through the path. Um, <clears throat> that, uh, so the merit uh, required to produce the Ushnisha multiplied by uh, tens of billions uh, is what is required to produce that voice. Uh, and uh, these, all of these measures that we've described here are uh, simply measures that, have, that are really uh, put forth uh, for the, in the, within the perspective of those who are to be trained. Uh, however, the merit is in fact uh, measureless; it's incalculable. So, um, there's an, an, the next verse ex uh, demonstrates that. So, this is verse nine, and it says, "Thus, even though the merit is limitless, it is merely said to have a limit, just as one expresses all the regions of the universe by subsuming them in the ten directions." So, uh, the commentary here says that. Uh, although it's the case that the merit uh, which is required to produce all of the good qualities of a Buddha uh, is measureless, um, <clears throat> we say just as um, we express the uh, universe, the entirety of the cosmos, by uh, using the term the, the uh, ten directions. And if we say the, um, we say the merit of the entire universe that uh, subsumes the merit of the, all of the beings that are found throughout the 10 directions of the universe. Uh, so just as that is said, um, it's imp it, one cannot apprehend the measure of the good qualities of a Buddha, but uh, in order to, um, uh, f from within the perspective of those who are to be trained, the persons to be trained by a Buddha, uh, and, and, and for the sake of um, uh, causing such persons who are suitable to be trained in the, in the teaching, uh, causing them to enter into it, uh, we simply express 
uh, some uh, tiny portion of the actual measure. Oh yeah, that day and Jackie, son of good saw tie up. And you bear Castle to see somebody to my teacher, Mado, and it's a member day, soon turning. That is a good saw tie up at Della, and it can't say Sanjay Sugoi, Juan Chita, Juan Tata Chitanshin. Xiamei then uh, the next verse shows uh, how it is that the way in which the uh, uh, collection of gnosis is uh, limitless. Um, this verse 10. Uh, if the causes of a Buddha's physical bodies are immeasurable, like the universe, then how could the causes of the Dharmakaya be measurable? Um, so this, this is saying that... Um, uh, when it's the case that the cause of the physical embodiments of a Buddha are, are like that, uh, that uh, just as the, the cosmos is uh, limitless, has no end to it, uh, and thus is immeasurable, um, then that being the case, uh, how, could one, uh, how could one measure the uh, causes of the uh, Dharmakaya? Uh, these causes are without any kind of limit, they're, they're limitless. Oh, yeah. That's okay. You should be told Ani え、だって別で座られるみど、みど。お、あに、カソレ、デブジャチェンチュナ、先生。三ジェジュニパメラ、あ、デブパイ三タチェ、セイガラ。デブタムジェジュチュンウヤン、デブジャチェンボジェバレ
uh, <clears throat> or one could say it's entourage con consisting of six uh, sections. Uh, all of these, uh, the, the king uh, together with uh, his entire army can fit underneath the, the within the, sh the shade of a, these uh, huge banyan trees. And uh, likewise, that shade is able to uh, protect them from heat and uh, rain and so forth. Um, so uh, that being the case, just as um, this huge banyan tree arises from a tiny seed, uh, similarly, uh, it's the case that, uh, it's, since it is the case that all effects uh, arise from small causes and uh, that the, the effects themselves or the results uh, are uh, vast and uh, extensive, uh, since tiny small causes produce these vast effects, then uh, since it's the case that the Buddha's, uh, the cause of uh, a Buddha is uh, measureless, is without any measure, then uh, one shouldn't think that one can actually measure the effects of that, uh, the results of that. Um, one shouldn't, because one is un unable to think that, um, th that, it, that the effects of that or the results which uh, of accumulation of uh, of the accumulation of merit, accumulation of gnosis, that produce Buddhahood are um, merely um, uh, merely exhausted in a certain amount. Oh yeah, that is it. Yeah, that they will come to do something by the that they just come to the first two years, but they are not sure sure what they are doing. 各位的就三名是操作是哪些钱呢哦三件南极书记哥三名操了穷啊的三件南极安尼书记的就开了了等于穷啊的谁讲了安尼初年下班的南安安尼三名就操了穷啊的三件南极书记哥三名操了穷
and the uh, Dharmakaya in brief uh, arises, is born from the, uh, the collection of Gnosis. And then in the verse, it has a, it says, O King. Uh, and because that is the case, um, these two, the results of these two collections, uh, since they are the cause for the um, achievement of Buddhahood itself, uh, and uh, so here where it says the Dharmakaya, uh, Dharmakaya principally refers to the, or arises from the um, abandonment or has as its, 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 is, is its principal properties. On the one hand, the abandonments or the absences, uh, its elimination of things to be gotten rid of, and then the uh, attainment of uh, that which is to be attained. So those two factors or two, two um, aspects, facets of the Dharmakaya um, are uh, the uh, abandonments and the attainments that it possesses. So it says then that the uh, collection of Gnosis is the principal cause or the cause from which the Dharmakaya is, uh, arises or is, is born. Oh yeah, because uh Sanjay you talk about doing and doing in bears. That's Sanjay you to talk on the bear, doing a gina, do by take a need to son of the so you see good so tetabo, I need to do it. I need oh Sanjay you command the top of Dua in town, Sanjay do to bear, and devil Sanjay you command the top of a young girl in town. Dona. Tadan so then uh, this, uh, the conclusion of this is uh, saying in verse uh, 13 that thus these two collections uh, cause the uh, attainment, obtainment or attainment of Buddhahood. Hence, in brief or short, uh, devote yourself always to merit and gnosis. Uh, so uh, this is the verse 13. Uh, so there it says that um, since it's the case, as has been expressed in the prior verse, that um, these uh, collections of merit and the collection of gnosis, these two, are uh, the cause for the attainment of uh, Buddhahood, then uh, those who wish to quickly attain Buddhahood, uh, since, since Buddhahood is uh, produced or accomplished by means of uh, such causes, then in brief, uh, one, should, uh, one should constantly um, apply oneself um, uh, to achieving or to, to developing these uh, two collections, the collection of merit and the collection of gnosis. So this is this second verse then is an instruction to uh, rely to resort to um, and develop the collection of merit and the collection of gnosis. So the first uh, verse here um, it shows uh, what the uh, result, uh, which of the which of the um, uh, which result arises from which cause the which collection, and then the second verse. Uh, is an instruction to um, resort to uh, and apply oneself to to those two collections. Oh yeah. That was that I didn't Tenjiji 
So uh, here then, um, it's it, just as we've explained earlier that um, in the uh, context of the uh, dedication verse in the 60 uh, verses, um, there in that, uh, in that dedication section of the 60 verses, it says the, uh, uh, out of the, um, uh, the two, two collections, collection of uh, merit and gnosis, may all living beings uh, achieve the uh, state of Buddhahood that, are, that arises from that. Then uh, here um, <clears throat> in the commentary, it explains that uh, within the context of that uh, dedication in the 60 verses, um, it, it says that one should uh, understand um, the uh, the uh, uh, one should understand that this uh, that this uh, these this dedicatory verse, uh, which we we cited at the beginning of uh, the uh, uh, class today, the beginning of the teaching, uh, th this contains the in brief in summary form the entire body of the treatise. Uh, the treatise here is referring then to the 60 verses themselves. So that is showing uh, that, uh, the, that the entire body of the treatise w is designed to, to teach uh, and to explain how it is that one actualizes the collection of merit and the collection of gnosis, which in turn serves as the, uh, each of which ter in turn serves as the primary cause for the actualization of the uh, two embodiments of Buddhahood, uh, the physical embodiment and the uh, Dharmakaya. So uh, this, uh, one should understand this, it says here. And um, the way this is explained 
is by means of uh, presenting the uh, proof uh, that the aggregates in the person are uh, empty of intrinsic nature. And the reason which is given is uh, dependent origination, because they are dependent originations. So here, in, in this formulation of this statement, it says, uh, to quote it, the aggregates and the person are the uh, subject here. And uh, being empty of intrinsic nature is the uh, predicate or the property which is to be uh, proven uh, with respect to that uh, subject. That is, per, uh, aggregates, aggregates and person are the, uh, the um, subject, and one is attempting to establish the property to be proven, which is that they're empty of intrinsic nature, and then the reason which establishes the presence of that property to be proven within the uh, subject is dependent origination, or that they are dependent originations. So in this formulation of the proof statement here, it combines both the aggregates and the person uh, in, in a single proof statement, or so-called syllogism. Now, uh, in, 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 as we mentioned previously, uh, when one's actually doing this uh, development of the understanding of emptiness, one uh, initially has to establish the emptiness of the person or this, the I, and then, uh, then the uh, emptiness of the aggregates uh, in order to understand emptiness properly. Uh, that's the sequence of understanding emptiness, but here this is presupposing that one has already established emptiness, and then uh, once one's done that, one can uh, combine both the aggregates and the uh, person together in a single uh, syllogism because one's already understood the relationship between the, um, the uh, thing to be established, the, the property to be proven here, and the reason which does that. So. Uh, here, it says that if you take, uh, if you break this syllogism apart, or you uh, break it into the two forms of it, taking just the aggregates as the subject uh, and saying that they are empty of intrinsic nature because they are dependent originations, uh, they originate dependently, uh, then uh, in that, uh, one can say that uh, the, um, uh, the property to be established there is uh, 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 so the, the, the here then it's there's technical terminology that uh, in uh, has to do with formal reasoning and uh, so the uh, <clears throat> uh, the uh, property to be proven uh, is uh, that uh, here it says property to be, to be established is that things are empty of intrinsic nature and uh, the reason which enables one to understand that things are empty of intrinsic nature is their absent, their being dependently originated. So, so uh, here then it says the, the, um, uh, the valid cognition which understands that relationship between dependent origination and the aggregates and or the person, uh, that valid, uh, uh, valid um, understanding, understanding which is valid cognition, is something that one has to habituate oneself to uh, over and over again in the in the course of the path. Uh, so here, in, in especially in terms of developing the accumulation. Then the Tamochana, I need top 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 minde, top at Tatam to be treated. But Tiggy Diana, you generally give it, then they take a savvy yawa, cheddar, savvy yawam, cheddar. Then they junior tire bars, and ah, then they junior tire bars, a gala, corn jubilee, and be one to cheer. I need to take it and they check. Corn dobby, and be one to take it and they check it near your 
Kon jubilimbe wangit bunde git tende den torwata. Kon dobilimbe wangit bunde git tende den namsulian ko wa yunza yunza. Savi ya wa tende jundi taya bi tole. Nando ke ne chiji malobi ne ka maloba lamji ne ka so kamba cheba la. Anita so nung chodi ungre ungar wa te bang che o. So here then, uh, it says that one, one needs to uh, condition oneself or habituate oneself uh, to this repeatedly. That is uh, understanding, uh, having that valid cognition, which understands uh, specifically the relationship that obtains between dependent origination and uh, the aggregates or the person, if you break the, this uh, syllogism apart. Uh, so, so one has to under also, now dependent origination has uh, specific forms or instances, that is there's dependent origination in the sense of causality that effects arise in dependence upon their specific causes and conditions. Then there's a dependent origination in the sense of uh, the relationship between parts and wholes that a whole uh, or composite thing is, uh, exists only in dependence, up, uh, in dependence upon the parts that compose it. Uh, and then third form of dependent origination is that, uh, that uh, th designations depend upon their bases of designation as well as the uh, cognition which uh, designates them upon such a base. So these different forms of dependent origination uh, we can uh, apply the, the different uh, types of dependent origination to uh, <clears throat> limitless things, that is, uh, the limitless things which uh, are dependently originated can be subsumed into two categories here, uh, things to be gotten rid of or abandoned and things to be taken up or uh, uh, to be actualized. And uh, so that, that, that those two, uh, we can talk about it in terms of like the um, process by which uh, the uh, samsaric dependent origination develops uh, from ignorance misapprehending the nature of the self or, or the person as being real, uh, being the root of that uh, process of the development or uh, evolution, you can say, of, depend of uh, samsara. And, um, so that, uh, that is uh, to be gotten rid of or s stopped. And then the, uh, likewise, one can apply dependent origination, the different forms of it, to uh, the, that which is to be taken off, which here is a uh, reference to the, um, uh, the, uh, the uh, process of stopping samsara, that is the uh, taking, uh, practicing the path. Uh, so as to uh, induce the stoppage of samsara by eliminating the misconception that apprehends the self as being real, then that, that negates and stops the, uh, each of the subsequent factors of dependent origination. So yeah. all, all of those, uh, by understanding those properly, uh, one, and, and uh, habituating yourself to these, conditioning yourself to this, uh, on the occasion of the path, then uh, the, this uh, understanding, as it's been described above, functions uh, or serves to produce the uh, collection of merit. Oh, yeah. Chinji Maloba, Lamji Nagas, or Kumba Chevala, I need to go to the Gustan of the Toss of Gushin. That didn't it, that did you get to be Tama Sena, that で、ちゃまで、で、いしげ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ
Chanjugisemla, so here then, uh, that's a way in which understanding dependent origination as it applies to the things to be uh, abandoned as well as the things to be taken up in the course of the path. Uh, understanding dependent origination as the uh, cause, the the sign or uh, reason which establishes that uh, the aggregates and the self, a person, are empty of intrinsic existence. Uh, in that way, by understanding dependent origination in terms of these uh, limitless uh, dimensions of the things to be taken up and the things to be abandoned, as understanding all of that correctly, then uh, within the context of the path and uh, habituating yourself to that, this functions to uh, produce the collection of merit. Then uh, by understanding uh, the, the valid uh, cognition, which understands uh, that which is to be proved by that reason, that is, uh, the reason here is dependent origination, and uh, the thing to be uh, proven is that the self, uh, the, the aggregates and the person are empty of intrinsic uh, nature. So the um, valid cognition, which understands that uh, <clears throat> uh, that uh, th thing to be proven, the uh, that is the basically the uh, thesis of this syllogism that uh, uh, the uh, person and the aggregates are um, empty of intrinsic uh, nature. Uh, that sort of valid cognition, the re the result of. Uh, uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> Chanju Mm <coughs> So then uh, <clears throat> this, uh, the, the uh, valid cognition which um, understands that which is to be proven by that uh, reason, that is 
the valid cognition which understands that um, the uh, aggregates and the person are devoid of self, uh, the, the uh, cause of that, uh, I'm sorry, the result which arises from that is, uh, is the um, collection of, of gnosis. Uh, and uh, so um, it, it, this, this valid cognition functions as the, re as the uh, method by which one uh, accumulates the collection of gnosis. Now, where it says here that it functions as the method, uh, one has to supply that this understanding of emptiness, that is that the aggregates and the person are empty of intrinsic nature, that has to be, again, uh, governed by or controlled, uh, dominated by bodhicitta, uh, so as to function uh, for, to be, to become the uh, cause uh, for the collection of gnosis. So it's, it's, it, it, fun it becomes the method, that special term there becomes the method, uh, only when it is so governed by bodhicitta in that way. Um, and then uh, likewise, um, <clears throat> so uh, when it's adorned by those uh, vast uh, portions of the method, that is, here this is re in reference to what we uh, discussed earlier today about uh, the, all of the practices which one does motivated by bodhicitta, um, all of the extensive methods that are employed by uh, someone practicing the bodhisattva path. So when uh, this, uh, uh, this valid cognition that understands the thing to be proven by that reason, that is that uh, the um, aggregates in the person are empty of intrinsic nature, uh, then uh, that ver the, the continuity of that very valid cognition, which understands the thesis here, w that the aggregates and the person are empty of intrinsic nature, if one uh, habituates one's, oneself to that over time, then it uh, becomes the actual uh, collection of gnosis. And, uh, so we've laid out then the two, the collection of merit, how that uh, develops through understanding the, de de uh, the dependent origination of uh, all of the um, things to be gotten rid of and the things to be taken up in the course of the path, uh, basically referring to samsara as well as the, the uh, method or the path of uh, eliminating samsara. And, uh, and then here the gnosis, which understands emptiness, uh, that the aggregates and the person are devoid of intrinsic nature. So those two uh, then serve to give, to give rise to the collections of merit and gnosis. And uh, those two collections, the result of them are the, uh, the noble physical embodiment of Buddhahood on the one hand, and then the uh, noble uh, um, dharmakaya on the other. Yeah. Sanjay,